Hi everyone, this is Howard from Ford or Learn to Fly. I am pleased to present to you this lesson, this in-depth look at A2A's Comanche 250. This is a Piper aircraft, a low wing aircraft that we're excited to present. We want to dive in and have a look at this high quality product and learn to fly it. Let's go. Now, a lot of us have seen A2A products in previous Sims and we have been very impressed. And uh, we take a look at this airplane now, as you can see from the demos coming up and everything I'm going to do with it. You'll be impressed too. This is the most realistic airplane you're going to find in Microsoft Flight Simulator today. And up to now, we've been using the 172 from WB Sim, and that's still my 172 that I'll fly, the most realistic I can find. But uh, this one, as A2A does in the past, you want a low wing airplane that's fast, let's go grab the A2A. And let's look at some of those features as we go along. I'll demonstrate a lot of things right in the plane, but let's take a look at this presentation. Bear with me as we have a look at this. First of all, here's one of the liveries, the red one, and I'm using my standard call uh, tail number call sign that I use when I'm on pilot edge because they need an end number. Or they need something that's close to reality. So 67991 is the one I always use when I'm actually using pilot edge on the radio. In my demonstrations today, I'm not going to be using radio. We'll go to an uncontrolled airport where there's nobody. And so we won't have to be worried about that. We'll just focus on the features of the airplane and learning to fly it. Um, here it is at Toronto Island Airport. One of the flights I did was from Buttonville to Toronto Airport, which I've done many times in real life and wanted to see how, how it handled through those different phases. So introducing the Piper Comanche 250 in. So this is a low wing, four seat general aviation airplane made in 1958, right up until 1972. And this version is the most realistic that you'll find. The one, the, the green stripe that you see here is actually the airplane that A2A's owner owns. They own this airplane. And of course, it makes sense that they would model that first for Microsoft Flight Simulator using AccuSim. And those stripes are exactly what's on the 2.9er Papa, which is the real thing. And that livery is available here also. So let's give a, a bit of history here. As a lot of you know, this is the format that I use when I'm learning a new airplane. I'm going to walk you through first this only one page on a history. Then we go into the seven steps of learning the airplane. Um, before we do that, we'll look at the bindings in your sim. And so bear with me through that, scrub through the video as you need to, and uh, go to the parts that you really find relevant. Uh, this is a handful. There's a lot to learn. And there's um, when, when you look at each one of these elements, you may need to go and find other sources of information for using the specific uh, avionics that are here, etc., etc. So we got the idea here, single engine, four or six place general aviation aircraft, tricycle retractable landing gear, low wing design, typical of the Piper lineup. And so um, um, a lot of people jumped on this plane, those who could afford it, of course, uh, aviation enthusiasts, but certainly a lot of business people grabbed it too. 250 horsepower and room to take your friends and their luggage. So that would be an exciting thing, wouldn't it? When someone invites you to come for a flight like this, speed and agility. And uh, many of you may know the twin Comanches, the PA-30 and 39, which I'm sure at some point they'll come out and we'll review them also and, and, and make a lesson. So 58 to 72. So what happened in 72? Well, there was a huge flood and they lost all the designs and they just said, that's it, shut it down. We won't start retooling. And they just stopped completely. And then they at some point moved to Florida too. So Piper moved to Florida. Anyway, that's how it goes. Here is the owner of A2A Simulations with his um, two Niner Papa uh, airplane with the double green stripe, as you can see there. This is Scott Gentile, and he, he was on stream with us on Twitch when we were doing the lesson for this. And uh, that was a lot of fun, and they were so generous, they gave away a couple of airplanes while we were on stream. So that was very generous of them. And this is the person behind the team. And there's quite a few people. There's pilots and programmers and managers and everything on this team that he has built over these years. And A2A has made a name for itself as the best. Here's one of my better landings where you can see I'm doing a proper flare. I'm going to land on the mains first and let the nose wheel fall. That's great. And this one was at Toronto Island Airport. Technical specs here, May 24th, 1956 was its first flight. This is a 67-year-old plane, something like that. Uh, the PA-24. Now, you notice the Piper line all do PA this. and You know, there's all kinds of numbers there. Um, so uh, private aviators, flight schools have it. And we'll look at the manual. The manual is excellent, you guys. They've done such a great job. So we'll look at the manual at some of the things here. Typically on these lessons, I usually 
go find a POH online. They're all over the place. Uh, flying schools um, publish them. Um, flying clubs publish them. So you can usually find a POH for almost anything. And I usually stick to the real manuals when I'm learning these things. Here they've done such a great job on the manual with A2A. I'm just going to use that. Uh, range 740 miles to 1,000 miles depends on whether you use the tip tanks, as you see in this picture. Those are the tip tanks that can hold 15 gallons of fuel each. And they're optional. You can turn those off if you wish. And uh, cruise at 181. Now, actually, I, I was thinking about that number later. You can do 181. It's not recommended. It's way up in the yellow range. So it's probably 144, 75% power at 7,000 feet. 144 maneuvering speed, yeah. But, you know, a lot of us want to go faster, so why not? 200 pounds of baggage, that's lots of room for a couple of golf bags. We're in. All right, check your bindings first. And here's a nice close-up view of the bindings inside the airplane. We'll do some more cockpit orientation, but here you can see the mixture, the manifold pressure, which you can treat like your throttle, and then your RPM, right, which feeds a governor, etc. Down here is the actual uh, gear switch. Over here is carburetor heat. Over here is primer. This is all your engine stuff right here. And then, of course, flaps over here on the left. So the default Bravo throttle quadrant, the default profile, it actually maps two throttles, two propellers, two mixtures. It does all that, but um, you can just use it the way it is or pull off one of the levers, and then uh, it'll still be mapped properly. I did find that I did have to go to my pedals, my rudder pedals, and change the sensitivity so that they were gentle at first and then harder as they got along, as far as the sim goes, because I found that just touching the rudder pedals, this plane just really started moving around. So I did go and change sensitivities there. All right, this engine that they're using in here is very common. It's been used in hundreds of other airplanes and end up and ends up in thousands of airplanes, just hundreds of other model of airplanes. And it's a very common one. It is the six-cylinder version of the four-cylinder O360. And the O360 is a four-cylinder. So, you know, in the smaller planes, standard direct drive, 250 horsepower when it's full, but when it's full out RPM. Carbureted, so it has a heat, carb heat lever. And it's used, as I mentioned, in lots of other planes. All right, learning a new airplane. Here is the checklist for us. We're going to go through these seven steps right now. And we won't take long. But you got to at least know what to look for, and then you can do more investigation after that. I'm not going to read you all the pages and all that, but I'll point you in the right direction. So the first step is go find the POH. Okay. Well, they provide this manual. It's excellent. It's just wonderful. And um, when you look at that manual, you'll, you'll realize the quality of the work that they do. And it's just an amazing job that they do. Let's pull that over now and have a quick look at it just to give you an idea what's in it. Now, this is done very well. AccuSim is actually the technology they use. We see it uh, in our in the sim. There's many things that it will do, but we see it as the sound module. It's an AccuSim sound module of custom recorded sounds that will come through as an extra executable on your PC. And this is why it's still PC only. Um, okay, so um, let's just take a look at the first page. Here's where I got the picture of the owner. There's Scott. And uh, it talks first about the, pe the features, and then it goes into more details, the limitations. All the specifications are there, and the performance charts. And what we really care about, there's a couple things I'll point out, but here I wanted to point out the cockpit orientation. They've done such a great job of labeling everything and showing where everything is that I couldn't recreate that. Uh, I'd be doing the same exact thing. This is what I typically do for the lessons. I do this to all of them. And they've actually shown us where everything is. It's amazing. So it's a very well-made manual, no doubt about it. So what you'd want to do is go read some more about the different areas of the plane and what, what's in it, get oriented with it. That's the idea. Then they focus on this engine monitor, an engine analyzer, as some call it. And so all the different pages that could happen in there. The normal procedures checklist. And then, um, and then the emergency procedures are all in there too. So everything is here. This is really cool. A very well-made manual. And we'll go and reference that a few times as we go along. And then we also want to talk about the tablet, right? Now this, you can find it in a folder on your start menu, or you can download it from the product page on their website. And, um, and then you can have the manual and away you go. It isn't in the conventional place, right? 
Now, learning the vital speed, step number two, you've got to be able to understand the speeds for this thing. What, what's my rotate speed? What's my climb out? What's my normal cruise? What's my approach? What's my landing? What's my stall speed? And all of that, of course, is right here. Now, the airspeed indicator is in miles per hour. You can read knots down inside, but boy, that's hard to read. You got to get your head right in there. So it's best just to go with the miles per hour that's on it. And you can see in here, the main things we need to know, rotate at 84, climb out at 95. That's the main thing. All right, we can cruise along at 144. That's, you know, that's just a normal cruise. And we'll talk about that as we go along. Never exceed 203. Extend the flaps. Well, extend the gear when it's below 150. Extend the flaps when it's below 125. The approach and touch down. You should be touching down at 85 to 90. Best glide is 90 to 105. That's a lot. So make sure you write this stuff down. You want to keep that handy because that's what you'll need to know. Get to make a checklist. It comes with checklists so we don't have to make one. And it has them all. Now we'll use the checklist that's in the tablet. This is the cover page of the tablet inside the plane. That's what we'll use. And we'll demonstrate that when we go and actually fly the plane. But there are procedures, those same procedures in the actual manual. It's very well done starting on page 30. All right, the manual does talk about, now step number five is learning about engine handling. We jumped over three because this is a single engine airplane. And uh, now we're gonna take a look at engine handling. Now the manual does this very well, has all the performance charts and helps, helps us with this understanding of the balance between the MP gauge and the RPM gauge and the two levers that control that. The engine analyzer will help us with that. And so will the uh, the backup instruments that are sitting here. I prefer the backup instruments because you can glance and just see. Here you gotta look in a little closer to see the, the two right there. Now, learning about engine handling, you've got to be able to read the charts. All pilots do that. And here is the most important one, the power setting table. And we want to go and take a look at that in more detail. So here we see 65% power, 103 horsepower is what it produces at that. Gives you approximately 12 to 14 gallons per hour. And here's the settings that you'll want to do. And it just depends on the RPM as to what you want done here. And that's what you can expect. This is actually a very easy thing to look at and understand. So that's what we got in front of us now. And this is right out of the book and I just turned it, you know, sideways. This is their stuff. And uh, that's what we're using. Now in the cockpit orientation, and then we just go and fly you guys. So, you know, I'm not spending a lot of time on the presentation part because it's all demo. And we want to get in there and see the thing and just work with it, all right? Um, so here are the, th the things you should know for every plane you're going to learn. Where are the fuel tank selector switches? It's part of our checklist. Uh, where are the gear, flaps, and landing switches? Where's the fuel pump switches? Where's the carb heat? Where are the circuit breakers? These are all things that are part of our checklist and we have to go find them. All right, so let's go do a demonstration. We'll start completely with a walk around and we'll go from there. So what I wanna do, show you first, just before we go for the demonstration, I do wanna show you a couple of things in here. Let's go zoom into some of this. And I just wanna give you that orientation. I said I can't make them, I can't do a better job of making screens than they have, so we'll use theirs. The Hobbs time's over here. The Hobbs meter is over here. You have to write that down before you start, and you have to write it down when you finish. Um, in here you can see there's a mixture and the levers that I've shown you. You've already seen this one, this part of it. Over here, underneath the panel is the circuit breakers. You have to put your, your hand along the bottom just to see if anything has popped. And if you look over the yoke, you'll see all the other switches that are there. Pulling back out again and then pulling back in. So let's go here. They show you mastery of Yonics. Yep. And now they, you can come back into these ones and have a look too. You'll, you'll have the manual so you can go look at this stuff. All right, on this screen here, lots of stuff here, isn't there? But here's your gauges, all your temperature, pressure gauges, and your... Um, uh, fuel, uh, sorry, fuel gauges, fuel pressure, oil temperature and pressure, and your ammeter in the middle showing you charge and discharge. The starters right here, magnetos are here, and all the switches that you typically use are right there. Uh, really handy. Carb heat, if you need it, you pull it out. Primer when you're first starting up. Landing gear underneath. Pretty simple, straightforward stuff. Over here, 
Let's go here. There's the battery master. There's the fuel pump, navigation lights, landing lights, all of those that I mentioned. And the clickable hub like we're always used to. Here's all your heater and ventilation. There's even an ashtray. Believe it or not, it works. The vent amount and lock, that's kind of cool. The ADF is right here. The fuel flow meter is right there. And, uh, yep, that's pretty much it. All right, let's go to your plane and do some demonstrations now. That was pretty brief, and I just wanted it to be brief because we can go and see it inside the plane and get rolling. So let's take this for a flight, our very first flight. Jump into the hangar here and have a look at this. We've got the guards here looking at the plane and making sure it's safe. <laughs> now, normally in a hangar, you wouldn't tie down. You would put the chocks on, but as you can see, everything's still in its state of rest. We're going to go and do the walk around and we're going to go and check everything out. One of the things you can't do is get right in and look at the brakes, which in a normal walk around you would be able to. So I'm using the drone cam at the moment just to see what that looks like. And uh, the normal thing that you would do here is <laughs> the uh, hydraulic line comes in and out depending on the angle that we're looking at. There it is. Okay, the hydraulic line is there for the brakes. <laughs> and uh, when we take a look at the brakes, we typically, what a, a pilot would do is typically come over and look to make sure there's enough disc metal part here and to make sure there's enough brake pad. And that's just a quick check. You just do a glance at it. If you have wheel pants, there's an access door on it. And then you just check that there's no leaks on the lines themselves. And so, you know, that's one part that in the walk around, you can't really get into this side of the inside of the wheel, uh, but you can do the other parts. So let's go back out now. Looking at this plane, I mean, the realistic part of it, even that exhaust pipe looks like an exhaust pipe should, right? <laughs> there's a lot of detail. There's certainly a lot. We're going to pull this out of the hangar. First, we'll do the walk around here and the protection of the hangar. Then we'll, then we'll pull it out with the T-bar and then we will go through the normal uh, checklists. So let's go and do the walk around now. Jumping inside. We can now um, just go through the checklist from here. Right now I've got the door, the, the windows open. We're gonna see a difference when the plane's running. When the windows open, the sounds change. Um, same with the door, when we open the door, trim wheel up there, a little bit of cockpit orientation while we're at it here. Um, you saw a lot of this already when the, in the presentation on getting familiar with what's happening here. I've got it set up with the 530 and then a normal comm radio is my backup transponder down here and the normal controls that you've already heard about. Parking brake is on. I'm going to remove the control lock. Yep. This bungee cord is the control lock between the two. <laughs> it's very effective. It works, right? Any, uh, you know, it doesn't need it here inside the hangar, but any wind that blows the control surfaces, these uh, are being held in place by a bungee cord. So we remove that. It'll go into the uh, bag down below here and we'll open up the tablet and we'll go take a look at our pre-flight and uh, walk around and see how that goes. Now the tablet can be moved anywhere you want. Grab it here, move it here, whatever works for you. This seems to be a good place to work. And from here, you can just move to the area you want to go to, or I can turn on my head tracker if it's not too disruptive to everybody. And I can look at the parts that I need to look at. So let's zoom into this. Let's go take a look at walk around. We'll go there first. And uh, although you can click anywhere you want, we're just going to do the proper procedure. Here we are in the cabin. And if you just click the right arrow, then it will just go in the normal fashion, the way the POH tells us to. And that way we won't forget anything. So the first thing we did was remove the control lock. The second thing we want to do is to put the flaps down all the way. One, two, three. And so that's for inspection reasons, all right? Now, I typically turn the power on and I check the fuel also. In some planes, you turn the power on just to lower the flaps. So power is on. I'm taking a look at the fuel gauges here just to see what they say. They say I've got three-quarter tank, three-quarter tank, so we're good. 
I mean, we're good for a flight. I'm going to turn that back off again. The other thing we'll do while we're here is we will record. Let me use this to do that. We will record our hours on the Hobbs meter. And it looks like we've got 9.6. There should be a decimal there. Yep. So we got 9.6 hours. And you write that down. I mean, that's a normal procedure, just if you want to be realistic about it. All right, let's just reset that back now. We've got the flaps down. We're ready to jump out of the plane. Let's go here. And so now it takes us outside, and you can see that the flaps are down. And what we do typically is we look at the hinge pins to make sure the pins aren't bent or missing. We look at the linkage rivets or screws that hold it all in. We also look at the linkage that actually moves the flaps up and down. And we actually grab them and move them. You can hear that bit of a warble in the background. That's typical, and that's the exact sound that you would hear when you move them. And you're just checking that the linkage is sound and secure. You're also looking for any breakages or anything like that. Now we move over. We're just going to go counterclockwise around the wing. Let's do that. Now we're over to the aileron. And the aileron, we're just going to push up and down. And when you do that, we're looking in those little square access holes for the linkage that actually moves them. And again, we're looking at the hinges underneath. You'll see them better. You're looking at the hinges and the pins and making sure everything is, is there and not loose. Believe it or not, that's exactly what we're doing. Now, I do want to point out, there's one thing you can check also. As you move the aileron, it's hard to see, but there is actually the control wheel moving. The yoke is moving. And you want it to move towards you when you bring the, the wing up. You can, If you can see that in the distance, I'll show it to you from inside the plane when we do a controls check. That you can see that it should point towards you when you bring that aileron up. And that's an important step. All right, on to the next one. We're going to look at the tip now. Here we look at the navigation light. We look at anywhere and tear. And in this case, we do have, in this configuration, we do have a tip tank. Now, the tip tanks are very easy to have a look at. I think um, we'll have a look inside, but I think there's only about three gallons left in here. 15 gallons maximum. And we just pop that open and have a quick look. And uh, it's hard to see. There's nothing in there. It's three gallons is practically nothing. If you could get a better view here, you could just get in there quickly. You would actually see a little bit of blue at the bottom. It's hard to see from this angle. But, you know, you're searching for gas here. So we put that back in. And we close it down. So it's as we expect. We didn't expect much fuel in there. The interesting part is if you go back into the tablet right here, and if you actually change the fuel, let me bring the tablet over here better. If I can. Can't move the tablet. Let's do it this way. <laughs> uh, so you can see here the, the, the fuel that's in here. We're on the right tank. So let's just open that up for a second. And if you actually fill this up, let's just do this. Look at the weight of the plane start to lower on this side. You see that? And there's the fuel coming up. I'm looking inside, I can see fuel in there, all right? And if you look right over top, I can't see it from this angle. It actually shows up as almost the same blue as this. All right, so, you know, that gives you an idea what that looks like. I'm going to take it back down to three gallons for our test flights. We don't need all that extra fuel. And uh, put the plug back in and away we go. Part of the walk around means that you're going to check that everything is secure. Latches are latched, uh, covers are, are closed and latched properly, and w you wiggle them to make sure they, they work. That's the idea behind them. All right, let's move around to the underneath part. This is actually taking uh, water, any water that's there, at the lowest point of this fuel tip tank. And so we're taking the Gats jar here, and we're just pushing it up, letting it fill up. You don't need to pull out a lot, but as you pull back... <laughs> all right, I'll leave it there for a second. We don't want to drain all three gallons. <laughs> you typically only do like half, and then you could pull it away. And when you let go, nice, nice graphical sound there. Almost sounds like they're dumping it on the pavement, but typically you'd you'd pour it back into the tank. And so that's as simple as that is. We got a few more fuel testing areas to go look at. All right, that's right there. You notice there was two things here. One was the check the fuel from the top. The other one was check it from the bottom and you're looking for contaminants and whatever. So while we're right here around the tip, we're looking at the leading edge tip and we're seeing that the light is there. You could turn your lights on and try it. 
and during this whole walk around, if, you're, if your battery is on right now and your lights are on, you've got to be careful you don't drain your battery. But these look like the converted LED kind of batteries, uh, kind of lights. Now, while you're here, of course, and, and you know, the interesting thing is it's tied exactly the way you're supposed to. You are taught this in ground school, how to tie these ropes uh, for the tie down and away it goes. I wouldn't leave it on the pavement like that. I don't know about that. Uh, as you turn on the engine and start going, you've, you've got ropes flailing around. So um, a lot of times we unhook them and take them with us and we come back, we, we connect them again. Depends on the flight school, etc. Next, we're just moving around. Take a look at the graphic. We're just moving around in a counterclockwise motion and it makes it smooth and it makes it, a, it's actually a very quick procedure and you are checking everything. Now we're going to check the fuel in the main tank. Open it up. And you'll notice there is that kind of blue or more purpley color right here. Depends on the lighting. If you're out in the daylight, this actually does show up better as a blue. Well, that's interesting. Here we are in a hangar and it comes kind of purple. All right, so we got full fuel there. Or no, actually, that's not full. Sorry, you guys. That was full when I first tried this. Let's just look at that again. Gee whiz. Let's get right in there. No, nope, that's not all the way to the top. So you can tell you've got less than, and, and knowing the fuel gauges, it said we had three quarters. So that's three quarters right there. That's cool. Very nice. I like the animation and we always did with A2A. From here, remove the chocks. Now, in this case, they just push them aside. Typically you'd move them right out of the way because you're going to come back in and you won't know exactly where your wheels are, but and then at this point, you would be checking the tread. You would also be checking for leaks on the hydraulic line. And as I mentioned earlier, you'd be looking at the brakes if you can see them just to see. You know, we're not mechanics. Uh, we're pilots coming in and expecting, inspecting the plane to make sure it's worthy. And if there's a leak or there's no brake pad left, that's not good when you come into a stop for sure. All right, while we're here underneath, we got to open this. And we've got to try the jar. Let's see if it works. It depends on where your controls are set. Take a look at this. No fuel. What does that mean? This is important, you guys. I'm doing this intentionally. That is the normal thing. That is a proper place to, to sample fuel underneath here. So let's just come back here to our, um, back into the air. Let's go back into here. We'll just click it right here, back in. And we're gonna go take a look and see if our fuel is on, look. It's off, so we're gonna turn fuel on. There's no way fuel can be there for us to sump unless unless uh, we've actually turned it on, All right? And we could also we could also prime if we need to, but let's see if we can see some fuel already without priming. Priming takes it right up to the intake valves, so we shouldn't have to prime it. All right, so let's go back out. We were over here, and we were gonna try and take some fuel out of here. It should work now because we've got the fuel valves on. I mean, that's realistic, you guys. Look at that, no water. If there were water, you would see it. The water and the fuel obviously don't mix, so they would definitely be separated. You're also looking for sediment too, which means it was unfiltered fuel coming in, right? How did all that sediment get in there? So that's what we're looking for. And then we pour it out onto the pavement. <laughs> uh, I hope not. <laughs> We did in the old days, in the 90s we did, every time, and we didn't take that much fuel either. We took a very thin little thing with a screwdriver on the end. All right, so now we come to the front of the plane and this is where you inspect the blades and you would actually run your finger along the blade, the leading edge, make sure there's no nicks or cracks. And you do that to all the blades that are here. Then you would also look inside to see that no nests are there, no rodents are there, and that it's fairly clean. If it was just packed with dust and stuff like that, then obviously it's gonna have a cooling problem. You'd also look down here. This is actually an air filter right here. And you would look at that air filter to make sure it's not clogged either. While you're here, you would typically, if I can actually do this. Yeah, it'll let me do this. You would typically look at the front wheel too. You're looking for the tread. You're also looking to make sure that this, the, um, you know, the spring damper, the oleo or the, um, the shock absorber, all of that is right here. And we typically would put our hand up against it and see how much space there is. If it's already compressed, it could be bursted or something. So those are the things we actually look at you guys while we're here. Everything looks good on the front. We move around now to this side and take a look at the oil. And we open up the oil. This is something A2A has been known for. 
in all of their planes in previous simulations, uh, they always uh, had this feature. Now this is a brand new plane, it's only got nine hours on it, and the oil is still so clear it's hard to even tell, but it's right around here. The, the nice thing is you can check on here just to see what it looks like also under maintenance. And if you go under maintenance, you can go take a look at uh, right here where the engine is, right? So inspect, everything looks green on the engine. This is a really nice feature, you guys. And then right here, spark plugs, you know, fine wire spark plugs actually have less fouling. Um, here's where you clean your spark plugs if you can't if you can't even get the engine started. Normally you would start the engine and then run it up to 2000 and then lean it. And that should burn off all the stuff. But uh, if you can't get it started, there's got to be a way to fix that. And the mechanic would be doing that. As you can see in here, we've got 8.9 quarts, 74% got a maximum of 12 quarts and so that's fine for flying it's i think it's something like eight so we could we could take it we could just top it up a little bit here and just make it different all right and then uh overhaul the engine overhaul all inspect is good we'll come back here and we'll look at some of these screens like this one right now the engine's idle and it doesn't look like much of a screen this is so important for learning about the engine we wait till we see what that's all about so we're good with the oil. Put it back in. Away we go. Make sure it's locked. We don't, we don't want to be losing oil while we're flying. And close the cover. Next, we go over and take a look at the left tank. And we take a look in there. It should be the same as the right tank. Both of them had 22 out of a possible 30. So that looks pretty good. It's up there. I'm wondering why this is purple. We're inside a hangar. So that's the only thing that's been different from before when I had a look in here. When you're outside, it comes up the nice blue that it's supposed to. Sort of like the blue like this, you guys. Now this is a GATS jar. For those who haven't seen me use one of these before, this is what's called the GATS jar. And uh, this is made, uh, all the flight schools have them now. This is made so that when you push this stainless steel into the area where you're pulling fuel, it'll flow down that stainless steel pin into this hole, which goes straight through into this container. And you're inspecting it and then you're actually going to pour it out. And if you'll notice, it has a screen in there. You pour it out with the screen, so you're screening any sediment from going back in. And if there's water, you would just pour the fuel until you get to the point where the water's going to come out and just leave the water in here and dump it. So, you know, the, the whole point is this is a really handy thing, you guys. Now, on my, on my Twitch stream, I use this for drinking Gatorade. And it's just a nice effect because it looks like I'm drinking fuel. There's my straw. So <laughs> it's actually good while you're talking a lot. Let's go take a look now. All right, let's close that. Did we lock it? Yep. Let's close that. And let's move on. Now we're doing the right wheel. The chocks have to come out. You're inspecting the whole thing for wear, for leakage, etc. Moving on. Here we have the pitot tube cover. Without that, if you don't remove that, then you will not see any airspeed, of course. So off that comes. And you look in to see if there's any insects or debris. Or in the winter, you're looking to see if it's frozen. <laughs> And, uh, and then take the tie down off. And don't forget this little guy right here. This is your stall horn trigger. So you want to be able to just click it, make sure it's movable. That's all you have to do. All right. Well, we're going to do the same now on the left tank. You're looking at the leading edge to look for dents and brakes and rivets that are loose or anything. You're looking at the light, make sure it's all intact. If you're testing your lights for night flight, you'd have those on. And being LED, they don't, they don't draw a lot of power. All right, moving over to the tip tank now on the left side. We're going to go take a look at the fuel. We know what to expect. We expect three gallons, and I can hardly see that. All right, you could go back in again and do the same thing here. Fuel payload, fill it up and see what it looks like just for the effect. But you've got the idea. Everything's latched. Everything's secure. Wiggle, wiggle. And we're looking to make sure that light works. Also, the port light is red. It has to be in working order, for especially for night flight. All right. So that's, um, now we move over and we got to now sump some fuel um, from here. And again, up we go. And you know, being only three gallons in there, I wouldn't take a whole thing. And away we go, just enough to see what's going on. Next, come back over now and do the same thing on this side. We're checking the flap. Sorry, we're checking the aileron. I'm just trying to see where I'm oriented here. The aileron on the left wing. And then we're moving over to the flap, doing the same thing there. Beautiful. Love the sounds. That's AccuSim in action, you guys. 
All right, now don't forget that we all are also in two different points here, one on each side. We're checking the static port. That cannot be painted, it cannot have debris in there. That's needed for a number of instruments. So that's an important check too. We're actually looking right in it, and uh, just to make sure. Now we come around to the back of the plane, and the main thing to do here, of course, is to take off the tie. We've got all three ties taken off now, and you're also going to move the elevator. Now in this case, this is a stabilator. It's the stabilizer plus the elevator, and up and down it goes. And you're just checking that that works. You're also checking that the rudder works. And you're checking, when you do this, you're checking again that you're checking the linkages. You're checking to make sure that uh, hinges aren't missing pins. You're making sure rivets aren't loose. You're really just making sure the thing is sound. Coming around now, we look at the other static port on the other side. Yep, it's clear and free. We're good. Now we go to our last step. Oops, our second last step. Our second last step here is to go to the baggage door and load up while you're here before you get back into the plane. All right, it's already got, oof. It's already got some stuff in there and I don't want all this luggage. But <laughs> So let's take a look at this. As soon as I put bags in, watch the plane. Maybe watch right here. As the plane gets heavier, it actually moves, watch. That was not so heavy. Okay, let's put this one in. Not so heavy, here we go. Oh yeah, that's a heavy one. It sunk down a little bit. Let's try this again. Oh, it's already down. Okay, and then we'll close the door. Latch it, make sure it's secure, and we go back into the plane. All right, that's the walk around, everybody. That's all there is to it. Okay, now with the pre-flight done, let's go take a look at how to pull it out of the garage, and then we'll do some more with it. So one of the things we can do here, if you take a look over here at the controls area, um, we haven't looked closely at this. I mean, we, we did in the presentation, but I just wanted to show you that there's this T in the middle. And this T in the middle is a T bar to pull it out of the garage. So as soon as you click that, boom, look at that. We've got a, a bar here. Now we just have to use your normal flight controls, your yoke or your stick to move it around. If I go left, if I start pulling back toward me, we should be able to pull the plane out of there. But you notice it's not moving. You notice that? The parking brake is still on. Now you can go back inside and click it. We can just do it from here conveniently. And then as you pull, it'll come toward you. So just treat the bar as if you're pulling the bar. Yeah, there it goes. You pull it even more, like all the way back, it's going to move even faster. Now, if once I'm clear of the door here, and I can start turning it using the yoke also. Now you can also use that for pushing it back. Hey, fella, you shouldn't be there. And so now I, I, I would start turning it as soon as I'm out of the door. Looks like I am now. I want to clear the edges here. There we go. Sunlight! Look at that spinner. Isn't that nice? Um, excuse me, fella. What a graphic, eh? What are these people doing here? So, you know, no way to get them out of the way, you guys. So we'll just ignore that. Now, as I mentioned, I'm going to pull back. And turn. That cool. That has got to be the coolest thing. Now, the same thing goes with pushback, too. You can do the same with this. So then I let the yoke go, and there we go. Now I can push back also and put it back in its spot where I need it. But that works for me, and that's going to be into wind, so I'm going to do my run up from there. That's a really cool feature, you guys. I like it. All right, back in. Let's now go do the run up. So to do that, we go back into flight info and checklists. All right, remember the flight info screen? We've gone through this in the presentation, but uh, just as a, a, a reminder here, where the plane is sitting right now, where I'm going to do the run-up, I have zero knots and one knot of headwind, so I'm good. Um, no precipitation. Looks like a great day to fly, 2.9 or 9 or 2, and we got greater than 10 miles of visibility. With the fuel I have on board, the estimation is about 4 hours and 10 minutes, but we're not doing that. We're just doing short flights. And um, the range is 600 statute miles. Here it shows in blue, it shows that it's still a bit chilly for me. If this person sitting here were green, that would be very comfortable. All right, just so you know. And then all of our speeds are right here, as you have already heard. All right, we're going to go over to 
our checklists area. And before engines start, pre-flight is complete. Passengers have been briefed. Now, I won't go through a briefing today. It's just going to make this video even longer. But a typical passenger briefing is simply orienting them to where the first aid kit is, the ELT is, where the fire extinguisher is, what to do in the event of an emergency when what we're going to be doing, reminding them not to touch the controls if they're in the front seat with you, and stuff like that. It's really, you know, and any questions that they might have. So, you know, it's all of that. Uh, anyway, the passengers have been briefed. The seatbelt's secure. And the one thing that bugs me still, it's the only thing, it's actually the only thing that bugs me. I cannot close the seatbelt. I would do that in a real plane. Anything that there's no person, I mean, if there's no person there, I'd close this. Now, I do have it loaded up with four people, but I've got passengers turned off so I can see the dash. So maybe it's undone because there actually is a passenger there. But um, anyway, I wish I could just click it to close it, you know. All right, so that's it. Seatbelts are secure. Control lock has been removed. Of course, we did the briefing. Uh, sorry, we did the walk around. So the control lock is removed. Parking brake is already set. We can check it again to make sure it's pulled out. And it isn't. I actually pushed it back in to, to do to do the pullback. So let's just put our tow brakes on and pull it out. Beautiful. It's good that it has a checklist. All right. Parking brake's good. Gear switch is in the down position. And once we start power here, it's in the up position. If it had a faulty squat switch, then this, you know, try to pull the gear up while you're actually sitting here on the tarmac. All right, flaps up. Good. That's what we have to do next. And we'll just simply use our flaps switch to do that. Inspection's over. We don't need that. And we can see radios are off, of course. I say, of course, you never leave avionics on when you start an engine, there, there could be a surge of power to start with. All right, and so Autopilot Master, we are not using that. We're not using either one of those. That's our buttons right here. All electrical switches are off. All right, let's just take a look at how the best way to look at this, like that. Here's all our switches right from the master all the way along. Our magnetos are off and the rest are just controls. Now also the circuit breakers is the next checklist and they're underneath the panel. This is a unique plane. I've seen them on top where you just run your thumb or run your finger across the top, but here they have them underneath. And you're just running your hand along to see if any of them are poking out further than the rest. I've also got the headset plugged in, you guys, and it's going to have noise canceling, but let's leave that off for the moment. So you can hear the sounds and then I'll, I'll show you the difference between that and noise canceling. So all switches are good. Let's go back to our normal screen here. You can read it. Radio's off, autopilot. Okay, all electrical switches are off, circuit breakers are in. Rotating beacon on. And the rotating beacon happens to be this little guy right here. All right, now a lot of us have the beacon switch in our, our alpha, so we're good with that. The next thing we'll be doing to start the engine is we'll be putting master on. We'll also be putting fuel pump on so that we can get make sure that there's enough fuel there to get started. And we're going to come over here and we're going to prime. All right, so we're going to do that and then we'll get this thing started. The avionics, avionics master is still off. All right, I'm going to leave the yoke visibility off for the moment so we can see what's going on. All right, your rotating beacon's on. That's telling the control tower that our plane is going to start soon. It's telling everybody around you our plane is going to start soon. All right, let's go to engine start. Fuel on desired tank. Now I've got them both on full on mains. Yep, both are mains. These would be your tip tanks over here in the 90 degree position and back here at the 180 position is your off. All right, so both tanks are sitting now on on uh, forward to the main tanks. We're good. All right, mixture rich, throttle cracked and prop full forward. So mixture, mixture rich, full in, propeller full in, and the propeller, sorry, and the throttle back and in a little, in a little. That's it. We're set. Carb heat is off. Master switch on. Fuel pump on. I do it three at a time, right? So carb heat off. That's it right there. Pushed in is off. Pulling out is on. Don't do any halfway anything. It's on or off. It's just a lever, right? And so carburetor heat is off. Now we're going to put master on, fuel pump on. You can actually hear it. Isn't that cool? Now that's only for takeoff and landing, you guys. That's We don't use it any other time. 
Unless it's a backup emergency. All right. Fuel pressure check. So the first thing we do is check, make sure we've got five PSI right there. Yep. And that's what happened because of the fuel pump. Now we've got some fuel there. Now the next thing to do is fuel pressure check, fuel pump off. Now, this is, has to be done pretty fast because if you turn the fuel pump off, and I'm talking away here, making things slower, but if you turn the fuel pump off, that pressure will eventually just, it'll dissipate. That, that, that fuel is being distributed throughout the system and the pressure just lowers. All right, so I'm gonna leave it on for the moment. I'm gonna do the primer, set the mags on both, and before I start it, then I'll turn the fuel pump off. So let's do that. I'm gonna unlock the primer. One to five strokes. If it's a warm day, it is July right now. It's 59 degrees, according to there. And I'll just do it like three or four. We're good. Make sure you lock it afterwards. It can cause troubles. You can end up with the engine conking out. All right. So now I'm going to turn this off. But I am going to turn on both. There, it's on both. And I'm going to start the engine. Prop clear. to adjust for 1200 to start. If it's a cold winter day, you would leave it at 800. Now that's pretty loud, isn't it? Isn't that wild? Also loud because we got the windows open, so let's do a little experiment. That one's already closed. A little better already. Let's also put in my headphones. Very nice. And let's do it one more step, you guys. Let's turn on noise cancelling. I like it already. And let's just adjust our vent. Yeah, I want it more like that. And we have a vent up here we can move to. Wherever it is you want that. Okay, adjusted everything. We're good. But what you should really be doing, instead of being distracted by vents, you guys, is the minute you should, within the first 30 seconds, and I should have done that right away, the first 30 seconds you're looking at your oil pressure right here. Let's see if we can get a better view of that. There's your oil pressure. It's in the green. The green. You can see the green area. We'll look at that a little closer later. But So we've got fuel pressure, even with the fuel pump off. This is the fuel pump provided by the moving engine. So that's good. We got plenty of fuel. We have a, a charge on the amperage. Um, I'm not sure if that's, yeah, it's showing positive. Positive 18 amps, positive 17 amps. So it's interesting. Some show charge and discharge, some show current draw. Um, so I want to show you what that looks like. Now the old temperature will come up. You'll see that rise with time. We'll leave our engine running. We want it to be warm before we take off. Let me just show you something about the engine electrical system. We'll come back over to maintenance. That's a beautiful view, but we'll come over here first. So right now it's showing us that the alternator is charging the battery, keeping it topped up, and it's also supplying all our electrical needs to the airplane. If we were to drop our RPMs down to zero, or I mean down to idle, which is about 600 RPM, 700 RPM, you'll notice the alternator can't put out any voltage now. It's not going fast enough. So everything we have running right now is running off the battery. And so this is a really great graphic. I just love the thing. And so the alternator, this is a good thing to remember that the alternator needs at least 700 RPM. And it'll, it'll charge everything and keep your battery topped up. All right. That's the idea behind it. And so this is the best way to see what's going on. There's my battery voltage, 13.8, which is typical of a charging battery. When the alternator's on, it puts out 13.8. The, the battery sees 13.8, so that's what you're going to be seeing. Now, if you were to keep that back on a discharge state, you'll notice this battery voltage will drop immediately to around 12, and it'll just continue dropping from there as the power gets pulled in for what, everything that we're running. There's 12.3. At some point, you'll see it change to 12.2. We don't have much running in here. We got to turn on some lights or something, or turn on blower motors or, you know, the heaters. So you're seeing this pretty constant for now, but that's going to eventually deplete. So we want to make sure our RPMs are up, even just a little bit. And then next thing you know, the alternator is working. Nice feature. All 
that's not what we want. All right, so we got all the way down here. Fuel pump, mags, prop, starter, oil pressure, mixture, lean is required. Okay, so let's just take a look at that. Lean is required. I'm just going to be looking at my RPM, the revolutions per minute, as I pull this out. I'm just doing that this time, and then I'll turn on the uh, engine analyzer, avionics. I'm pulling it out till I see there's a drop in RPM. Should be any minute now. Right there, there's a drop and then even more drastic. And then I'm going to go back and do it a little richer. All right, there, I've got it leaned while I'm sitting here idling. My spark plugs will not get fouled. And this is important too. Let's go look at maintenance. Bear with me while we look at these things. If we look at the engine analyzer. If this were a, if these were fouled plugs, they would all be tiny little dots, all right? So they're all working fine. And um, this is a great screen, you know, this for analyzing what's going on. Take a look at First of all, it's showing us this is the this is the fuel pump. Let me just zoom in as much as I can here. This is the fuel pump. Or is it behind me? Yep. This is the fuel pump here from the engine. So we don't need the one from uh, the electrical one. These are the magnetos. There's two magnetos. This it supplies a spark to two spark plugs, two sets of wires, two sets of magnetos. What's really cool here it tells us our temperatures, etc. But as I increase the throttle the MP lever. Look at the butterfly valve. Is that cool or what? Pull open, more fuel comes in. Pull closed, almost to idle. Is that a great graphic or what? And of course it gives you some numbers on the right which are really handy. It also gives you color coding up here to tell you whether things are okay or not. As I increase it, you notice each cylinder head gets yellow shouldn't take it to full but I just want to show you that we are seeing some smoke coming out of here I'm pushing these engines too far while we're sitting here on the on the tarmac yellow here is not good we see red where, where the combustion is happening we see the exhaust is in orange all right so I'm gonna pull that back now idle and you don't see the orange you don't see the intensity etc so you can also see the condition of your engine too right so oh, I really like this screen. So I'm going to take this back up now to do uh, come over here. Let's take this back up to 1200. Let it charge. All right, back to here. And we've done all of those things. Mixture has been set. All right, let's do taxi. Now in this airport, this is Buttonville Airport, they don't want you to do run ups down by the, the hold short. They want you to do it on the ramp here. So we are facing into wind. We're gonna do the run up first and then the taxi. So we're gonna do run up here. All right, so for the run up, position into wind, brakes hold. I've got the parking brake on, so I'm gonna use that. Fuel quantity check, fuel selections, desired tank. All right, quantity we said, three quarter each, 22 gallons as we know, and we do have um, sorry, fuel uh, is on full and we've got brakes checked. All right, we're good. Um, mixture as required, we got it. Throttle to 2000. So here we go, bring it up to 2000 now. Remember, the blue levers are all in. We're just using the black levers now to bring it up to 2000. Sounds good right there. Before we do this part of it, I want to turn on the avionics now that things are running because I want to see from the engine analyzer. Just turn the avionics switch on. The engine analyzer is going to tell us a lot more information. So we're sitting at 2000 now. You'll see manifold pressure and the RPM show up here. 19.3. Okay. Fine. There, now it's 2000. Oh, the RPM is 2,000 underneath the 19.3 up top. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we can see a more a digital one here. This is actually nice because of the, the... It tells you the position. It shows you the green part. And that's a really handy thing. Also, the linear gauges here show us the uh, the battery's good. Um, shows us the other information that we need. But this is handy. If you see this screen, you guys, it simply means that you want to fill anything. No, I'm going to use my tablet to send the information over. I don't have to fill anything or do anything here. All right, so 
let's go look at what we're going to do here. I'm going to open it up so we can see both. I'm going to move my... I'm just looking to see if it, actually if I'm in front of it. I'm going to move the key to right, left, and both. And I'm going to watch my RPM drop. You can see it digitally here too, right? So first thing I'll do is take it to the right. That's two over. Look at the RPM drop. Yep, definitely. 1870, so it dropped about 130. And I'll take it back to both. And don't forget to go back to both. It clears the plug that wasn't being fired. That's what that means. You're actually testing the right magneto circuit all the way to the plug. And that means the left plugs were not getting a spark, and so they were getting fouled. So now that you're back on both, you're burning it off. Now we'll go back to left, and the right magneto is not getting any spark now. And we're seeing a drop in RPM, relatively the same drop, so we're good. We go back to both as soon as possible, and we let it burn off any carbon buildup on those things. All right, simple as that. While we're here, we're going to also take out the carb heat. Pull it out, we should lose about 100. That's good. Don't leave it out too long again because this is unfiltered air. If you've got dust and things on the ground and you're pulling them into the engine, that's not a good thing. So don't forget, carb heat is used when you are on low RPMs and it's used typically on landing. Uh, you can do carb heat check anytime the engine runs rough, but uh, that's what it's there for. So while we're here on the ground, we won't be using carb heat. All right, so is there anything we have missed? Uh, propeller, yeah, let's talk about that, you guys. So the propeller lever is there. And what we're going to do is show you the analyzer while we do this. So we'll go over here to, uh, right here is actually the screen I want. What I'm going to be doing here, I'm going to be moving the lever in and out slowly. Well, I see people cranking these things, but it now the propeller lever, it controls the airflow, sorry, it controls the oil flow inside the governor up, up by the propeller and so the oil flow so what we're doing here is we're, we're, we're calling it cycling the propeller so we're pulling it out there's a familiar sound put it back in isn't that a familiar sound so take a look up here first of all at the graphic and maybe just for fun take one of these off so you can hear what it sounds like. As I move the blue lever, watch the propeller up here. Do the propeller shape actually change? Is that wild or what? That is just amazing they've done that graphic. But what we're doing here is we're slowly pushing the oil in and out and warming it up inside that governor. The governor actually has a centrifugal part of it. It also has an oil fill valves that will help turn those blades while it's spinning. Isn't that amazing? The technology behind it. And we're back up again. So, I was going to get warm in there now. That's great. Alright, that's all we want to check here. I'm going to pull back the power now, back down to 1200. Actually, I'm going to take it to idle, make sure it doesn't quit. As you're coming in for a landing, you could be on idle. You don't want it to quit. So that's working great at idle. It's not charging anything, but it's working great. So we'll bring it back up to a charging area. And that's now complete. Let's go have a look and make sure. Right here. There we go. And uh, herb heat check. Yeah, we did that too. All right, so we're ready before takeoff. Well, we're ready for taxi. And in taxi here, it says primers locked, avionics masters on, and meter check, radios on. All right, so let's do that. So primers locked right here. There's unlocked, there's locked. And you typically pull on it and it's fine. And now we're gonna go in and make sure radios are set. And we would set any frequencies we need to. This is COM2 down here, so we don't have to do that. All right, I'm gonna put the uh, noise canceller back on but with the help with our audio. All right, and then uh, transponder on alt over here. It's sitting on alt. We'll do a quick test here. The light comes on, good. Altimeter set. Now we're gonna take a look at the altimeter and we're going to read right from here. Altimeter's two, nine or, nine or two. So here's our altimeter right here. 
2902 and it shows the elevation of the airport which is good we also want to set the heading indicator to this the compass is at 247 we want to set this it doesn't look right there we go that's it yep two four almost 250 okay we're good there all right heading indicator all right heading indicator is good landing gear lamp should be on on there's the green landing gear lamp we're good and uh, nav lights as required. And I'm going to just turn on the nav lights. Strobe, taxi, and land. Now, in fact, our taxi land lights are mapped to left and right landing light. Parking brake release, brakes on initial roll. All right, we're going to taxi down. We're going to radio and get permission, but we're going to taxi down. So to do the parking brake right here, you have to do your tow brakes, tow brakes, release now we're going to taxi and I look left right everybody's clear and uh, the first thing you do is just let go of the brakes as you start to move press them again you want to make sure they work it's a brake test as you're turning watch your instruments some should stay steady like this one this one is actually left wing right ball and we're seeing this one, oops, which way are you going? We're seeing this one turning also. So you're checking your instruments as you're going along. There are acronyms for that, like steady, steady, turning, turning, or left wing turning, steady, steady. So you'll hear people say things like that. I'm just barreling right along here. I've got clearance to go straight through this non-active runway. Let's get this thing under control. I'm talking away, talking about instruments while I'm barreling down the taxiway. All right, so we want to be pretty much like that. Let's see what that looks like on the outside. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Oops, now I'm swaying. Let's do that again. All right, down to the end. already noticed my airspeed is alive probably not a good sign it on a taxiway but that's good we'll be looking for that when we do our takeoff for sure love the sound of this thing you can actually hear the cylinders such a nice throaty sound exactly what it should sound like long taxiway down to 33 and then we'll take off from there a little bit of haze but it does say greater than 10 miles Now we got ourselves a nice warm engine. It's going to be great. Let's get to the whole short line and then we'll do takeoff. That's good right there. And we'll watch for traffic here as we make our call to the tower now. All right, we can see traffic in the distance, but that's from other airports. That's probably over at Pearson, not too far from here, YYZ. As we look around, we can see, let me just readjust my view here. There we go. Looking good. All right, we got clearance. We're not going to do all the radio checks, you guys, just so that we can focus on what's happening here. There, took the parking brake off. Get around to 33. Looking good. All right. And uh, one thing we didn't do was time transponder and talk. We already got transponder on the talking part. We're not doing as far as that goes, but I do put on full lights. They're on already. Sorry for the uh, head tracker there. And uh, I also want to make sure that um, I'm going to leave it like this for the moment. 
with my head tracker so it's easier for you guys to follow. And then the other thing we didn't do that I didn't show you, but I did it, and uh, it was between the two recordings here, was the controls free. So let's do that. There's nobody here in the runway. It's a very abandoned airport. So let me just do it while I'm here. And I just want to walk through that procedure. So I'm just going to do it like this. So the typical uh, thing that a lot of people will do is they'll just go in, out, left, right. They're good. All right. And that's a quick check. And from the outside, you can see it looks like this. You can see everybody doing that when they first start out. The typical thing that we do in flight school, they taught us to, as you turn the yoke left, the aileron should be up. So we use our thumb like that. So we just look over and go up. And if we were to turn it to the right and look over, it should be down. So the way to just remember is up, good. Look over here, up, good. All right, same sort of thing. So the typical rule is we look over and go one, two to see full deflection. Look over to the right, say three, four to see full deflection. Five, six, and then seven, eight. So there's your eight steps and checking your controls. They're now free and correct. We're good. And uh, we also want to check our trim to make sure it's at neutral. And in fact, it's not. Even that has some sound. Well, all right. So that's everything, right? Time transponder talk. We've got everything full, including rich, color, and throttle. Away we go. Does that sound like it's running rough? That sound like it's running rough. 25 RPM. I'm pulling back to power. And I'm going to stop. Definitely sounded rough. Any suspicion whatsoever? You stop. That's not planned, you guys, but that's what it's like with a re realistic airplane. This is so realistic, maybe I was idling too long. Get over the hold short. I would tell the tower that I've aborted the takeoff. All right, let's just stop there for a second. I'm going to put the parking brake on. We're after the hold short, so we're clear of the runway. Let me just run this back up again. Definitely sounds rough. Shouldn't be sounding like that. So, probably idling too much. I probably got spark plugs that have fouled. Over to maintenance. Inspect. Over to engine. Yeah, you can see some smoke coming out of here. So, uh, we've got to burn that stuff off. Alright, so we're at uh, 2000 RPM. That should do it. I'm going to lean it now and we'll just see what happens. We'll just take the RPM like this. There we go. That's as lean as it can get. So I'm going to just keep it right there. It's already starting to burn off the plugs because it's actually increasing RPM as I just leave it alone. All right, and we can see by the white dots, there's no more smoke coming out and the white dots. It's so handy to learn how the engine's going. And so we we fixed our problem. That was a rough sounding engine on takeoff. Very valuable. I mean, that's something that you don't want to have happen. So I'm going to leave the, the uh, mix, mixture knob where it is. I did, I did lean for taxi, but then I sat there probably for a while. So let's bring it back to 1200. And we'd call the tower again and or to call ground and tell them we're doing taxi to the active. All right. Parking brake is off. Head tracker's off. No one over there. Oops. Got a vehicle coming out on the taxiway. Well. Oh. bit hazy out there. Not the best for flying, that's for sure. 
Oh, said we had greater than 10 miles visibility, but it looks kind of hazy. Even though we leaned it to its fullest, the, the, the brakes really grabbed, don't they? We leaned it to its fullest, we're at actually peak, we're not 50 degrees rich a peak, but during takeoff, we're actually gonna put that mixture lever full rich. And even if it's some unburnt fuel, it'll help with cooling. All right, let's see how it goes this time. Because we had troubles earlier, I'm going to just take it up to 2,000. Make sure everything sounds good. It's got a nice sound to it. It's got a nice rhythm to it. All right. Go pump on. All the other lights are on. Everything's good. Camera's locked. here just to keep it to the right and your speeds alive temperature pressures are good We've got good rpms now almost 2600 which is what i expect i'm going to do a little pull up right here looking good and we'll trim that for 90 95 somewhere around there good all right, we're rocking and rolling. Cylinder head temperatures are getting high on a couple of cylinders, so we want to get up to 500 feet at least. Gear up, let's get some speed going here. Put that mixture in, make sure that we have some more cooling. Actually, you know, unburned fuel does help with cooling. Take some of that heat away. Believe it or not, should have pushed that all the way in before it took off. All right, there's 500 feet returning. At this point, I'm going to turn off the fuel pump. I think you should wait probably till 1,000, but uh, we'll do it this way. Get the turn, and I'm going to just lower the nose a bit for cooling reasons. Take it up a bit more. with cooling and I'll pull back a bit on the power. And we're getting close to circuit height anyway, but we're going to pull back some more anyway. Yep, solar head temperatures are up there, but they're not in trouble. Well, there's circuit height. Let's turn toward our downwind. And as we do that, let's pull back some power here and give our engine a break there and we'll just do this also don't need all that power screaming down downwind all right and while we do that but then we'll do a quick mixture check and that circuit height right there we should see an airport right there there it is right off our wingtip beautiful that's what we're after all right make sure we control it Around the downwind, so I don't want to go too fast. Let's get that slowed down a little bit. All right, gear was up, back down again. Good, fuel pump back on again. Perfect. I'm gonna do my mixture, make sure that it's the fastest, the best to make. Oh, look at the climb there, wow. Put the flap. Oh, I put gear down and I climbed, what? Okay, so let's just turn this. All right, mixture's good. Um, let's put carb heat on. See where we are. There's the big, huge interchange there between Highway 47 and 404, and that's for a good, a good uh, point of reference. We've got it slowed down to the flap range. I'm going to give it two flaps. Start. Pull back some power as we head toward the 100 mark. 
opening left base for 33. You pretty much use that as a pivot point, sure. That intersection. And trim that for the speed that you want. Uh, I'm pretty much about the 95 right now. All right, as we get closer here, we'll have a look at our, our base. We're about three quarter mile out. There it is over there. Beautiful. Let's get down to the 500 feet above, which will be 1100 on the altimeter. And there's our 500 feet right there. Almost 600, okay. And make our turn here. And we'll give it one more flap. That should take us down to maybe 85 on the approach. And I'm going to put my propeller levers full just in case I have to do a go around. Mixture's rich. Again, just in case I have to do a go around. Fuel pump is on. Herb heat is on. Coming in at 78. So that's a little too slow. So I'll get the nose down and pick up some power. There we go. That should pick us up back up to 80 to 85. Looking good. Lights are on. As we get closer, we'll pull back some power here. And this will be a touch and go. There. Looking good. Pull back some power. Layer that nice and gentle. Looking down to the end of the runway now. There we go. Nice. Let's now let the nose fall by itself. There we go. Pull power. Ooh, look at that pull to the left. We got flaps up. And we're up. See that pull to the left, got to get that right rider and knowing that it's going to happen in anticipation. All right. Let's lower the nose a bit. Ups are already up. Good. Beautiful. Car peak goes off. Remember on that low power setting, you want that car peak on. And I'm just a bit too high in the nose. Push that down and then trim it. Watch we don't cook our engine, that's great. All right, Let's push it down just a little more. There we go. All right, let's see if we can get 500 feet per minute. All right, this next one will be a full stop just so we can see how that works, you guys. Hopefully that's insightful. Take a look with full power, what our gallons per hour is. I can't even imagine. Is that at 26, maybe, gallons per hour? Ooh. All right. As we near the 500 mark again, we turn. This time I'll do, I'll turn off the fuel pump. But you know, when you're doing circuits, you could pretty much leave it on, but you're turning it off on crosswind and then you're turning it back on again. <laughs> Same with my lights, I'm leaving my lights on. Um, the gear is up now. <laughs> Not thinking about that properly. And uh, you know, and then we'll just do a nice wide circuit this time, give ourselves enough time again, so we know what we're doing. Just look back and see where the airport is. If you can't see the airport, we're in trouble. And we are so steep. All right. Slow and low like, like this is not healthy, but right. And as we get closer to circuit height, we'll just head down this way. Nice gentle turn because we're still slow. And there's circuit height right there as we level off. As we level off, I'm going to pull back power. There's no sense going screaming in there then pulling it back to try and slow down. There we go. Let's do that for now. Keep the turn. And keep the altitude. And that's pretty much it there. It's nice. Uh, it's got a, some great um, EFR checkpoints here you can use. 
as you're flying through this area. All right, primer, master, mags are on both, that's good. All switches are good, circuit breakers just feel underneath, all of those are good. Fuel pump is on. All right, carb heat, on, good. Check again where we are. That's my direction, a little bit to the left, okay. It's a good to have that thing as a as a reference, isn't it? And then uh, circuit height, I'm, at, I'm good with that. And I'm just going past the threshold of the, of the runway right there. Right where that wing tip is. It's the threshold of the runway. All right, so we pull back power at this point. Hold our altitude. You're down. Under 150 is good. And we're going to give it two flaps. We're going to trim that so we don't balloon. There we go. We should actually start a descent and slow down at the same time. around 15. As we get closer and we take our MP down to zero, we can put our RPM lever full in in case we have to do a go around again. All right, let's let that drop. And we'll get set up on base. I know it's boring. It is boring for some people to sit and watch this, but this is how you practice all phases of flight, and this is how you get better at it. I should be let that drop to about 500 feet per minute. Looking good on the way in. No traffic coming in straight in, which they do here a lot. And right about now, we're at 600 feet above the ground. We'll be at 500 feet in a minute. Oh, there's our runway, so let's get over there. All right. Pull back some more. And if we pull it back some more, I want to give it full propeller lever. It's all the way in now. At least we have to do a go around. And I overshot, but I'll just do an S turn here. Careful that speed while you're doing a turn like this. All right, now full flap. Gear is down, doing a check on that again. Mixture's rich, repeats hot. Switches are all on. A little bit of power here. Stretch the glide. Not a very good circuit, but you know, this is how you recover. 85 knots is perfect on trim. So I'm gonna leave that pitch. 85. I want to go 85 all the way in. If I'm not going to make it to the runway, I just give it more power. Okay, I'm going to make it to the runway and overshoot it, I'll do less power. Simple as that. And I'm going to do less power right now. Take it to a glide. We're just a little bit less, more than a glide. In we go. This is going to be a full stop, you guys. I'm down to idle. There. Numbers are gone. To remember. Oops. Stay on the runway. That. Beautiful. The nose drop. Oh, it's a bit too abrupt. And then full brakes. Both both brakes. And we should be able to stop before that turn off. So that was the, letting the nose down was I I I, I let the uh, the yoke let it go too much. I should have let it go gently and let the plane fall on its own. But at least it wasn't landing on the front wheel. Flaps are up. Beautiful. And I'm going to set the mixture for a taxi after the old short line. Beautiful. Sorry, the head tracker is a bit jerky, but I'm, I'm sorry about that. I'm just going to set the brake while I mess around here. Now I'm going to bring the RPMs back up again. 1200 or so. And I'm going to set my mixture for taxiing. Again, I'm just looking at the RPM meter. Nothing fancy. I'm not looking at EGT or anything like that. You can't do that till EGT is right up there. And there's a good taxi right there. So that's all set for taxi now. Good. All right. And the landing light can come off. That can blind people, believe it or not. And the fuel pump can come off too. Even if the engine dies here, there's no, uh, there's no danger. All right. Transponder on. We'll just set it to on instead of alt. Beautiful. And then we would just tune the radio and call ground and away we go. And that's up. 
Looking good. We got our clearance to go, and we look both ways. Make sure there's no other traffic, and away we go. Here on the east ramp. on. Forget to step on your toe brakes to do that. And we'll just take it back up again to 1200. Good. Let it run there. Avionics off at first. So let's take the take a look at the checklist just to make sure we're doing it right. Look at that engine. Still healthy. All right. We'll come back to flight info, checklists, and now we will do landing after landing and then after landing we cleaned it all up fuel pump went off which went off mixture lean trim for neutral and then we want to do shut down one last thing i just didn't do is the trim for neutral we did check the checklist if i were to take off like this i mean i check it before every flight but if i were to take off like this ooh, the nose might come up too soon or something Similar. All right. In shutdown, parking brake is set. Radios are off. Transponders off. Avionics master off. So they want to actually. They want you to actually turn them off. It's hard to do with my head tracker. Okay. I come down here and just give you an idea what that looks like. There's off right there. That would be in the off position. This one's already off. This one is off. Good. And then here's the avionics master right here. Oh, it's hiding behind the yoke right here. Here's the avionics master off. And then now we will, um, it's off also. Lights are all off. Everything else is off. We're good. All right. So let's go over to master switch off, throttle closed, mixture idle cutoff. All right. So, um, master switch off. Lots of people are surprised the engine doesn't quit. And then throttle closed. Meaning idle. And then we, oops. And then we pull the mixture all the way out. And that should kill the engine. There we go. Now control wheel secured. Magneto's off right here. And then, uh, sorry, control wheel secured. Put the tie back on. It is secured there. And the uh, doors and windows closed, and then the tie down secure. So that door is closed. That door is closed the window. But we have to get out that door, so we'll open it. And then now let's go put the tie downs, etc., tie downs, etc., on here. So we'll come back over to here. Wheel chocks get in place, tie downs are in place, pedo covers on, cabin door, baggage door, because people have to get their stuff out. That's good. And we'll unplug the headset jack. Sounds good to me. Close that. All power's off. All switches are off. They won't drain any power while you're gone. All right, we step out the door. Boom. And as we step out, and as everybody goes out, you saw it sort of lift there near the end. But there it is, everybody. From start to finish. Comanche 250. Now it's your turn. Take it for a spin. Get it to the practice area, wherever your practice area is. I was using Buttonville here. You'd go north to the Keswick area. You'd go a little further east if you wish. Over the farmer's fields and do all your practices there. Take it up to 4,000 feet and do some slow flight, turns, level flight, 
do some stalls, do power on, power off stalls. Head back to the airport for your first landing and go around practice. Do a bunch of go around, stay in the circuit for a while. You'll get better and better and better. And then plan your first cross country flight. So please share your thoughts in chat about how you feel about this airplane now that you've flown it. So Andrew and I, Andrew's my co-host on Twitch. Andrew and I would like to, and you know, the whole flight simulator community in Twitch here in, in YouTube, uh, would like to thank A2A Simulations for providing their quality products to our simulator platform. Great move on their part. 12 million users are using the Microsoft Flight Simulator now. Oh, it's a big market. Thank you, everybody. So uh, if you have any questions, come to our Discord server. Um, certainly, um, you can also sign up to get any tweets. I should change that logo to an X now. And um, and come and see us on our, on our uh, Twitch channel to see what's happening because we're doing something live every week, two or three times a week. See you in the skies. 